Hi. Hello everyone, I'm Jasper Sado and I welcome you all to my yet another session of online tutorials. Today I'll be taking up the explanation of chapter 5, mention an English book Beehive of class 9 prescribed by CBSE. The name of the chapter is The Snake and the Mirror. This prose section has been penned on by Rakum Muhammad Bashir. He wrote this chapter in Malayalam language and from Malayalam it has been translated into English by B. Abdullah. Now let's have a look at the life of the author. Rakum Muhammad Bashir, he was born on 21st January 1908 in Kerala. He was a writer, humanist, freedom fighter, novelist and short story writer noted for his path breaking down to a style of writing that made him equally popular among literary critics as well as the common man. He was formerly known as Bekor Sultan and he was a renowned writer of Malayalam literature. The government of India awarded him the fourth highest civilian honor of the Padma Shri in 1982. He was also a recipient of Sahitya Academy Fellowship, Kerala Sahitya Academy Fellowship and the Kerala State Film Award for Best Story. He died on 5th July 1994 in Calicut District, Kerala. Now let's have a brief introduction of the chapter. Now this chapter, this is a humorous yet interesting story. The story recounts a homopathic doctor's encounter with a snake. However, the interesting part of the story is that the snake spears him and gets attracted towards the mirror. Earlier, the doctor was indulged into self mutilation whenever he looked into that mirror. Now, a very strong message has been conveyed through this story and the message states that one should never be proud of one's beauty, strength and achievements. The humans should never overestimate themselves, rather they should always learn to live in reality. And the light message in the story is that how crisis make people turn to God for help. The fear of death makes a person realize how futile the worldly achievements are. It is faith in God and modesty in thoughts which make a person strong. So now let's discuss the protagonist of the chapter and here the protagonist is the homopathic doctor who has been portrayed as a person who can assess himself critically and humorously. He honestly admits that as a new practitioner of medicine, he could not earn much and had to rent a poor rat infested house without even the facility of electricity. He was a bachelor and seemed to be a narcissist who often admired his reflection in the mirror and thought of ways to look more handsome. His arrogance eventually turned into modesty after his encounter with the snake. Now the witty side of the doctor is also being highlighted in the story and how we can see his witty side it is through various anecdotes. One of the anecdotes he is telling us is that he desired to have a fat wife for a silly reason that she could not run after him and catch him when he would make some mistake. Thus the doctor is a candid person, a witty man and an interesting character who relates his encounter with the snake in a lighter way. Now let's start with the summary of the chapter. Now this story, it is basically a narrative within a narrative. That means the narrator narrates what a homopathic doctor once told to a group of people of which narrator was a part. Right? And when all of them, they were sitting in the group, the topic of discussion was regarding snakes and suddenly that homopathic doctor he you know asked a question to his friends and he asked that has a snake ever coiled itself around any part of your body and from this he started narrating his own experience his encounter with the snake now let me give you a brief descri uh, description of uh, doctor's room as well 
But this doctor, as I told you, he was a beginner in his uh, medical practice. So he couldn't afford a very big house, a uh, luxurious you know, room for himself. So he lived in a small rented room with no electricity. And to add to his troubles, the room was infested with rats. It was basically an outer room with one wall facing the open yard. It had a tiled roof with long supporting gables that rested on the beam over the wall. There was no ceiling. And you can barely imagine if there is no ceiling, that's an open invitation to the animals. That's why there was a regular traffic of rats to and fro on the beam. Right? And it would not be wrong to say that he was actually sharing his room with rats. Right? So that was his room, a rented accommodation. Now the story starts, he says that it was hot summer night, about 10 o'clock. He had his meal at a restaurant and he returned to his room. Now when he opened his room, he heard a noise coming from above. But as I told you that he was, you know, sharing his room with the rats. So he thought that it's a normal sound and he ignored it. Rather, he went inside, he took out the box of matchstick, he lighted the kerosene lamp on the table and he removed his clothes. Basically, uh, because his practice was uh, not uh, very much in vogue, so he barely had any money. So uh, there were just 60 rupees in his suitcase along with some shirts and booties. And there was one solitary black coat which he was always wearing. So whenever he used to move out, he used to wear that coat. And after returning uh, from uh, his uh, work, he used to hang that coat on the peg. Right? So he took off that coat his white shirt, right, and he hanged them over there and then he opened the two windows of his room so that fresh air could come in because as it is there was no facility of electricity in his room but the wind, God was also not, uh, you know, uh, in mood to bless him. Perforce he went to the veranda but he came back inside again because there was no trace of air and he planned to sit on a chair and take out a book from the box beneath the table and the book was Materia Medica. He planned that he should read this book of medicine because he was not able to sleep. It was too hot. Now when he opened his book on the table, what he observed, there was a big large you know, uh, mirror over there and a small comb lay besides it. So he felt tempted to have a look into the mirror. He took a look. And in those days, he was a great admirer of beauty and he believed in making himself look more handsome. Right? And why he felt that? Because he was unmarried and on top of it, he was a doctor. Right? So he was very much uh, possessed with his uh, profession and his looks. So he took the comb, he ran through his hair, adjusted the parting very nicely so that it should look straight and neat and again in the background he heard the sound but again he ignored and he preferred to look at his face in the mirror more closely and he took two earth shaking decisions that day now the first decision was that he wanted to you know shave daily and grow thin moustache to look more handsome right and second decision was that he felt that when he is smiling, he looks very attractive. So he says that he would always keep that attractive smile on his face. And why he do this? Because he feels that he will look more handsome. And why he had that belief that he is handsome? Because he was a bachelor and on top he was a doctor. So he was basically you know, looking at his achievements and praising his own self only. And then another lovely thought struck him and he decided that he would marry. And now the choice of the lady, he wanted to marry a woman doctor who had plenty of money and a good medical practice, right? But the condition was that she had to be fat. And the very reason, as I told you in the beginning of the chapter, it was for, you know, the reason that if by chance he made some silly mistake and needed to run away, she should not be able to run after him and catch him. And then again, suddenly a dull 
third sound came as if a rubber tube had fallen onto the ground. Right? But he was calm because he knew that the sound is it's a regular feature in his room. Right? But no sooner had he turned than a fat snake wriggled over the back of the chair and landed on his shoulder. The snake's landing on him and his turning was simultaneous. Right? He didn't jump, he didn't tremble, he didn't cry. Rather, we should say that he was not having so much of time to show us the reaction. So he was numb at that point and the snake slithered along his shoulder and coiled around his left arm above the elbow. Now the hood was spread out and its head was hardly three to four inches from the doctor's face. At that moment the doctor sat over there holding his breath and he was turned like a stone image in flesh. That means he was a man of flesh but he was like a statue holding his breath and without any movement. But then his mind was active, right? At that time, he felt the great presence of the creator of this world and this universe. And he felt that God is there and he had a conviction that yes, God will save me. And at that time, he actually wanted to write in bright letters outside his little heart the words, Oh God, right? So basically he was trying to butter the God that now please save me. And it's very normal with we humans that when we are in happy situation, we never remember God. But when we are in some difficult situation, we are in some crisis, we always run towards God begging for his blessings. Right. So at that time the condition was that he just wanted that God should appear from somewhere and he should save him. He could feel the pain in his left arm as the snake was coiled. He was crushing his arm very powerfully. Right? And one thing was very clear to the author that even at his slightest movement, the snake could strike him. Right? And he could feel that death is just four inches away. And then he started thinking that if, you know, by chance, the snake bit him, what medicine he had to take? And at that time, he realized that there were no medicines in the room. He said that he was a poor, foolish and stupid doctor. And, you know, he at that point, he forgot his danger. Rather, he smiled feebly, means weakly at his own self only. He was, you know, um, understanding that what a big fool he is. Even he's not having the arrangement uh, to save his life. And that to being a doctor. Right? And at that point, it seemed as if doctor, uh, you know, has been blessed by God and God appreciated doctor's, you know, truth that doctor is considering himself to be weak. And suddenly the snake, it turned its head and it looked into the mirror. He was mesmerized to see its reflection. And the snake unwound itself from his arm and slowly slid it into his lap from there onto the table and in front of the mirror he landed. It seemed as if he wanted to have a close look at its reflection, right? Now the point was going in the doctor's mind that what was the snake admiring? We humans, we have our you know, physical appearance to look at and admire how you look, whether you are looking good, pretty, beautiful, handsome, but what the snake has to admire. So he felt that, was he trying to make any important decision about growing a moustache or using eyeshadow and mascara or wearing a feminine spot. Feminine spot means a bindi on the forehead. But then suddenly, you know, he realized that how could he comment? Because the sex of the snake was not known, whether it was a male snake or female snake. And, you know, whatever he was, why the, author, why the you know, doctor is worried. He suddenly was, you know, uh, shaken and now he was not just a mere image. He remembered that if snake has moved, he has to save his life, right? And he suddenly became a man of flesh and blood. And he caught up slowly from the chair, went through the door into the veranda and from there into the yard and ran at his best speed, right? And when he, you know, was able to make an exit from that room, the people, those who were listening to his tale, 
they all heaved a sigh of relief. And one of his friends, he asked, that doctor, is your wife very fat? And the other friend asked, that did the snake follow you? At that point, the doctor said, God willed otherwise. Right? He wanted a fat wife, but God has given him, you know, a life companion who was thin, really person, really means thin, lean and thin person with a gift of sprinter. Sprinter means the best uh, runner, a fast runner, right? So what he expected, it was totally opposite. And to the second question, he said that he was so much, you know, uh, stressed with the encounter that he didn't, I wish to look back whether the snake was following him or no. Just ran and he ran till he reached his friend's house. Immediately he went there, smeared oil all over his body and took a bath. And then changed into fresh clothes and he went to bed. The next morning he decided around 8.30 that he would go to his house, take his two, three friends because he was not having the courage to go to that room alone. So he planned to take his two friends and he should go and pick up his luggage because he has uh, he had made up his mind that he would not stay in that room right now when they reached that room it was really very really surprising thing because the thief had left behind nothing he had taken almost all the good things which the doctor was having only one thing he had left behind as an inside and what was that it was the dirty vest which he you know, hand on the peg, right? He was so surprised at the sense of cleanliness of the thief that, you know, he preferred to leave this dirty vest rather than he should take it and wash it with water and soap and he could have used that also. When he's removing other stuff of the house, he could have taken this also. So he was really surprised about the, you know, cleanliness part and, you know, he was uh, amazed that nothing was there for him to pick up and the friends they also looked at the doctor's face because they were also ha having a surprise uh, you know portion on the face that there is nothing to be picked up and why we have come back to this room then three of them they just laughed and then they left that place and then one of the friends asked that did you ever see that uh, snake or did you see it the very next day when you go uh, when uh, when you went to your house to pick up the stuff and the doctor you know laughed and said that that was a snake which was taken with its own beauty he was uh, you know surprised to tell to his friends that that was one experience in his life that he has seen a snake overwhelmed by its own beauty and because of that action he was able to actually save his life and escape from that situation so that's all in this chapter, children. I hope you must have liked my video and my content. If you have liked my video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much.